Okay, we're going to be checking this uh, air conditioner out for charge. Now I can tell you I've actually taken some of the charge out, so we are going to be low on charge. But looks, let's look at the ambience and the conditions, the superheat, subcool, uh, temperature difference across a coil. And then we'll add charge to this thing to get it up to what it should be. Now I want to uh, emphasize this is for a TXV machine, so we're going to charge by sub. Okay, I'm going to give you some uh, temperatures. This uh, inside of the structure, we are at 81 degrees. The cooling is on. We'll check the outdoor ambient. Okay, here we're looking at the outdoor ambient. It's 81.3. And we're going to look at the temperature split across the indoor coil next. Okay, we are looking at supply temperature. Looks like about 66. Now, our return temperature is about 77. So, if you look at the difference between the two, You've got 11.5 degrees difference across the coil. Okay, uh, the difference across the coil is probably too low. We do have sufficient airflow in this machine. Uh, we're going to next check superheat. Okay, I am checking superheat at the indoor coil. So it looks like we're about 72 degrees. Okay, you can see we have, uh, well, 111.7 PSIG and we have 37 degrees. This is my evaporating temperature. And I believe I said my uh, temperature of the suction line was 72 and you can see 72 minus 37 equals 35 degrees of superheat so that's an indication we are very low on charge now here I want to note I have my temperature probe on the liquid line out here and I'm reading about 2 degrees subcool Okay, these are all the numbers that we have for this. These are all indicating I'm in a low charge situation. My suction pressure is lower than it should be. My uh, subcool is lower than it should be. My temperature split across the coil is lower than it should be. And my superheat is higher than it should be. Let's start adding refrigerant into this thing and see if we can fix this. Okay, here you might want to note I have the refrigerant cylinder on a scale. Like I said, they're always on a scale, so I know what's going on. Because this is 410A, it has to be charged as a liquid. If it's charged as a gas, it can split apart into the two... Uh, types of refrigerant that it's made of. Uh, blends have different pressures for the same temperature and the higher one will leak out faster than the uh, uh, lower pressure one. So we always charge with liquid when we're doing uh, any kind of blend. Okay, you can see we're zeroed out on the scale. Okay, we're going to start this unit up in a minute. Uh, I will note, because this is a TXV controlled unit, uh, the manufacturer wants 11 degrees of subcool, plus or minus 3. So let's see what, uh, what we can do. Remember, we had, I think, what, 2 degrees of subcool when we started. One other thing I wanted to uh, 
uh, check here before we started charging this thing is notice I have the gauge set up so that it's showing the PSIG and it's also showing the saturated temperature. So uh, we are condensing at 94.6. Now in the time since we started this, we have increased our uh, ambient temperature to about 84. I'm about 10 degrees above ambient. That's definitely too low even for a new unit like this. Okay, we're going to begin charging. Now, when I charge this unit, I'm going to be restricting the flow because I'm charging with liquid. So I'm going to restrict the flow. Now, some guys say you turn on the low side valve until you get 10 PSIG above what it's reading. Like right now it's reading 111. Okay. Uh, so if I had 121 or something, it'd be fine. That's a good way to do it, but it's, it's really pretty slow. One of the ways I like to do it is I like to note how much refrigerant I'm putting in by the scale. And if I'm putting in, say, uh, an ounce every 10 to 15 seconds, I'll probably never run into a compressor slugging situation. That's what we're avoiding by uh, putting liquid in the low side and uh, restricting the flow so we don't get liquid in the compressor. Okay, I'm going to begin charging this thing. A little too much. Okay, I think I'm settling down pretty well. Uh, let me show you the uh, scale and how fast it's moving. I think I'm okay with that time period per, per ounce. Now I'm going to switch uh, my gauge set to subcool. Okay, I'm showing 2.3 subcool. One thing I wanted to know: you see your suction pressure, you know it's it's above what it would normally be. That's because I'm putting refrigerant in. You can't make any sense out of uh, the suction pressure while you're charging because it goes up to the pressure somewhere between the pressure inside the uh, charging cylinder and the low side. Okay now I've shut off the refrigerant charge going in so our suction pressure is reading about what it should be reading and I do this periodically during the charge so that I can let everything settle down. This thing takes a little while to settle down. It doesn't, everything doesn't balance out perfectly right off. But you notice our subcool is, is in the ballpark. 11 plus or minus 3. And uh, we're pretty much settling at 10.7. So it looks like uh, we're pretty close on the charge. Let's see how much refrigerant we actually put into this thing. 
Okay, we put three pounds, six ounces of refrigerant into this machine. And let's go up and double check our subcool. Okay, looks like our subcool is settling down almost right at that 11, so we're 10.9, something like that. Okay, let's do another number here. Let's figure what the uh, condensing temperature is uh, compared to the ambient temperature. Remember, we were about 86. Okay, our temperature has actually dropped a little bit. It's 84 now. Uh, we're 328 on our PSIG 11.1 subcool. Let's see what the condensing temperature is. Okay, we are condensing at 102. So that's 102 above 83. So it looks like we're doing about 19. For this efficiency unit, that's about right. Older units could be 30 plus ambient. These newer units are going to be better than that. Let's go inside and double check our temperature difference across the coil. Okay, our supplier temperature is 50. Our return air temperature is 70.7. So we're about 21, which is within the ballpark for this piece of equipment. A lot of these run a little bit less, run 18. This one tends to run about, uh, about 20. Uh, and of course you can see the difference right there, 20.5, 20.3 is the difference between the two temperatures. This thing looks pretty good. I think I'm, uh, I'm charged where I should be. Now remember, this video is about charging. It's not about repairing charge. If I had a low charge on a unit, that doesn't mean I just add charge. If I add charge to it, it will leak down again. We all know that. We don't like to believe it because some of the leaks are slow and hard to live with. But once you have done your repairs, this is how you would charge a unit that uses a TXV. Now just for the heck of it, I'll do superheat on this thing too. Okay, note the superheat temperature, the temperature of the suction line is 53. One thing before I go too far, and as you notice, I did not use the superheat probe that comes with the S-Man. You can use it, and a lot of times it isn't too far off, but the problem is you're using it at the suction line at the outdoor unit. There can be a fair amount of uh, temperature difference between the inside coil and the outdoor unit. I'll check it out there and we'll make a comparison and see if this one does have much of a difference. But just remember, that's why I do this. Your, your superheat, unless the manufacturer says so, the superheat is checked at the outlet of the evaporator. Okay, I wanted you to note uh, we're showing 16.1 on the superheat there. It's actually going to be about 4 less than that, so it's going to be about 12 on superheat, which is actually a, pretty much a standard superheat for a TXV. Uh, but we don't charge by superheat with TXV. That is the modern air conditioner adding charge with a TXV controlled unit charging by subcool.